As you make your way down the stairs, torchlight begins to illuminate the floor below. The air is thick with the metallic smell of blood and burning wax. As you enter the room, a bizarre stage is set. Instruments of torture sit alongside fine furniture and scholarly tools. A pile of discarded weapons and armor sits almost forgotten in a corner. A fine clothed man stands locked in thought as he looks over these tools of pain and misery. A small smile cuts across his pale face. What sort of deprived place have you entered? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. If you're like me, you were really disappointed to have missed out on Mantix Terrain Crate Kickstarter. And if that's the case, I got good news for you. The product is finally hitting the retail market and is available for the general public. For those of you that are unfamiliar, Mantic is a highly respected miniature gaming company. Their claim to fame is games like Dungeon Saga, The Walking Dead game, uh, Kings of War, and a bunch of other ones. Last year, they launched a massively successful Kickstarter for this thing they are calling Terrain Crate. Now, don't be confused like I was when I first heard about it. It is not a terrain subscription month box thing. I know the crate can sound like that. They are venturing into the miniature 28 millimeter fantasy oriented accessory field. They have come up with a product that is basically just a whole bunch of miniature set pieces for tabletop gaming. Really, really geared towards fantasy and RPGs. And because this is kind of uncharted territory for Mantic, when they were about to launch it into the retail market, they reached out to myself and the other guys from the Tabletop Crafters Guild to help them share it with the world. Because it's such a cool product and because we all kind of wanted it for ourselves, we decided to partner with Mantic to show you guys what it's all about. They sent me this Dungeon Depths set, which is essentially a bigger set that has a little bit from each of the available themed sets. I really like these. I'm really excited about them. I had fun painting some of these up. I haven't gotten through them all yet, but what I wanna do is take a detailed look with you guys at what these pieces are, the quality of them, talk about the material a bit, and show you how I approached painting them. Because I did a bunch of different tests in terms of priming and painting and whatnot, and I wanna show you what I thought was the absolute best way and easiest way to paint these guys up. So let's unbox this crate and take a closer look. In this box were two trays completely loaded with little tiny bits of terrain. The first thing I noticed was the colors of the plastic that they used. Some of it was cast in a dark brown plastic and some of it was this sort of yellowy gold. This was done in a way that was appropriate for the pieces so that the treasure piles were gold and the wood bits were brown. I was planning on painting everything so it wasn't really relevant. But it is nice to see because this means if you want to grab something right out of the box or you haven't had a chance to paint it yet, it'll still look pretty decent on the table and it won't stand out as a bright white or weird colored plastic. There is a massive variety in this set and that makes sense because the one I received was the one that was a mix of all the different sets. There's stuff like tables, chairs, bookcases, coffins, torture tables, crates, barrels, traps, and a bunch of other stuff. And what I really thought was interesting was the amount of really, really tiny little bits. Things like rats and plates and skulls and bottles. Really small stuff that would be fun to use mixed with your own crafts. Things you could use to decorate the tables that you make yourself, for example. Looking over all the pieces, it was nice to see that the sculpts and the casting held a lot of detail. Sometimes affordable plastic minis can really lack detail, 
but these ones really delivered in that department. I think what impressed me most with the set, aside from the variety, was the sheer number of things that I didn't have in my collection. And that's because the vast majority of things in this set are things that are difficult or impossible to craft yourself, or at least very difficult to craft at the appropriate scale. I like the plastic that they chose for these. It's not a rigid hard plastic. It has some bend to it, which is great because it makes the tiny bits really durable. You don't have to worry about small bits breaking off if you drop them. Not if you drop them, when you drop them. I picked a few pieces that I wanted to paint and tested out a few different priming methods. I primed some using an aerosol primer that I would normally use on metal minis or hard plastics. This had a result which I was sort of expecting. It left the minis tacky, even after 24 hours. This is pretty common with spray painting soft plastic, so I wasn't that surprised. I primed some other ones using my favorite primer, which is the Vallejo airbrush primer. I just apply it using a brush, it goes on nice and thin. This seemed to bond really well and didn't have any negative effects. Just for fun, I decided to paint some of these pieces directly with acrylic paint. I washed and dried them thoroughly beforehand, of course, and I didn't expect this to work as well as it did, but it actually turned out to be the best way. The acrylic model paint bonded really, really well. It covered well. And this is really nice because this means that you can paint these skipping the step of priming. And this would be the way I would advise you to do it if you get your hands on some of these. I gave all of these a very simple paint job, just a few colors and a wash and the odd bit of highlighting. Because the sculpts and the casting on these is so good, I was able to really rely on a simple paint job and a wash to pull out all of the details because there actually were nice small details for the wash to bring out. So my final thoughts on this product is that I think they're really good quality. I think the price is really appropriate. They work out to be something like a dollar a piece, which I think is very fair. The details are really nice on them. The items that they chose to include are very smart and very practical and useful for Dungeon Masters playing tabletop RPGs. I really like this stuff, which is why I was so excited to do this video and to partner with Mantic. I wanna thank Mantic for sponsoring this video and for trusting myself and the other guys from the Tabletop Crafters Guild to do their product justice. Thanks guys, I really, really like what you've done here. If you wanna pick up some of these for yourself, you can get them directly on the Mantic website and I will put a link in the description where you can find them. There's multiple sets to suit your own tastes. These will also be available in your local gaming store or hopefully they will be. They will be available in many local game stores. So check there, support those guys with your purchases. That's it guys. I hope you found this video enjoyable. If you did hit that like button and if you have any questions about this product, feel free to drop a question in the comments below. I will do my best to answer it. And if I don't know the answer, I'll ask Mantic about it for you. Again, these sets are available on Mantic's website and I will put a link to that in the description below, but they will also be available in your local gaming stores. Well, hopefully yours, but they will definitely be available at retail locations. And I highly encourage you, if you can, to go out to your local brick and mortar game store and pick it up there if you can, because the fine folks that are continuing to run those stores in a very difficult time competing with everything online need as much support as we can give them. So check your store, maybe pick it up there if you can. That's it for this week, guys. Cheers, happy gaming. <laughs>